guys, it's me, Julian Greystoke. Today I'm wearing my I Super Believe in You Ted Cooper shirt. So today I'm finally back with another writing advice video. I haven't done too many of these lately, and mostly that is kind of because I feel like I've already talked about everything I feel qualified to talk about. But if there is a writing advice video that you would like me to do, comment below and let me know and I'll definitely give it a try. As I try to always say with my writing advice videos, I am not the god of writing. All I'm doing is giving you thoughts from my own experiences. Everyone's style and methods are different. Let's get into this. Here we go. You see, my friends, a while back, one of my beta readers told me that I am very good at writing pain, and therefore I should share my sage advice with the masses. So you've decided to injure a character. I'm a big fan of injuring characters. It works better if you're writing, say, a fantasy or sci-fi, but you can definitely do it in a contemporary story, especially if it's like a very action-heavy story, like a thriller. If you want to know why I think you should injure your characters or torture your darlings, links in the doobly-doo to a video I did about that. But today we're just going to be talking about writing the injuries themselves. First thing to do is to research the type of wound that you're planning to or have just inflicted upon your innocent character. I have a book which I could not find because, I don't know, fuck me I guess, which is called like Body Trauma and Injuries or something like that, which is a fun resource book about injuries. But some things to think about are obviously how was the injury caused? Was it a bullet? Was it a stab? Was it a punch? How does the injury heal and how long does that take? And what complications could go along with the injury, such as likelihood of infection or things like a broken rib puncturing a lung? Then of course there is the reaction to pain that every character will have, and different people react to pain in different ways. So it's important to think about how your specific character will react to pain. Take note that just because they are a big, tough character doesn't necessarily mean that they will handle pain any better than the small, meek character. Remember to show, don't tell when you're injuring your characters. We should be seeing their reactions and it should definitely be more than a simple it hurt or she winced. We want to see the physical reactions of your character to the injury so that we, the readers, can feel for them and along with them. Think about the quality of the pain. Is it burning, stabbing, throbbing, prickling, crushing, or piercing? And if you describe the pain one way, Unless it's changing, probably don't describe it as something else. Like, if you say it is a stabbing pain, then it seems a bit odd if a few sentences later you describe it as burning, unless for some reason the quality of the pain has changed. Remember that pain is distracting, and continued pain can make even normally well-mannered characters frustrated or crabby. Also remember that unless you're in a world where you have some sort of magical potion or magical cure, injuries last, and sometimes they can last quite a while. Even a small cut can take a week to heal, and it can still cause you some issues. Like, if you have a cut on your hand, and I mean, let's be honest, characters are always cutting their hands and things for some sort of weird ritual. That's not gonna go away the next day. That's gonna be there, and that's gonna be annoying you for a little while. Everybody wants my attention. My sister's outside, my phone is ringing. I'm trying to get through this really fast, all right? Of course, remember that an injury can interfere with your character's daily life, like I was just saying, and it can even be entertaining if the character is milking it, really trying to get sympathy for the injury. However, it's also a really great way to explore your character potentially needing help and how they handle that. Be careful when you're describing the injury of over-describing. A lot of times you see gallons of blood gushing from these characters and bruises forming immediately upon someone being struck. It takes a little while for the bruise to form. So be careful about going too crazy with your descriptions of everything. Something else to think about depending on the severity of the injury is shock. Find out what the symptoms of shock are. Find out how quickly it kicks in and what your characters can do about it. especially. If if you're going to seriously injure a character. And of course remember that if a character is seriously injured, they cannot just be walking it off in the next scene. If Frank breaks his arm, I don't want to see a scene later that's like the next day Frank is using his broken arm to lift something heavy. I'm sorry, that arm is still broken. And the last thing I'd like you to consider when writing wounds is how likely are they to die from it. 
This is especially important considering the setting of your world. If you're writing a fantasy story in medieval times and you don't have some sort of easy cure-all magic, then you have to deeply consider how likely your character is to die from these injuries. Even a small injury back in the day could be a death sentence. Setting up your world well so that your reader knows how dangerous it is for a character to be injured can really add to some super great tension for your readers. Because if they know how dangerous injuries can be, they're going to be super on edge anytime your characters can be hurt. So there you go, those were my thoughts about injuring your characters and writing pain. Jane is here, he's been here the whole time, just hanging out on my lap. I think the most important thing to remember with writing pain, as with anything else is to show and not tell. Your character's reactions and how they behave with the injury and the pain are going to be the really important thing that help the readers really feel what your characters are feeling. Jane also drooled all over my knee because he drools when he's comfortable. He's a very strange cat. Anyway, you guys know that I post new videos here Mondays and Fridays, so go check those out. I do have several other writing advice videos that you can look at if you like. Like I said, if you have any ideas for writing advice videos that you would like to see from me, or you'd like to see me go deeper into any of the subjects that I've already covered, that's one of the reasons the comment section is here. It's not just for abusing your fellow internet goers, it's also for leaving thoughtful comments. Chain's gonna drool on my other me. And if you look below in the doobly-doo, you will find all of the links to my social media as well as anything else I felt like linking down there. I will see you guys all again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye!